liquid rubber roofing has been a simple solution to easily waterproof flat roof decks for both new roofs and for re-roofing projects. But what if that easy fix is actually setting you up for disaster? In this video, we're talking all about liquid rubber and fluid applied roof membranes, why they can fail as a long-term solution, and what you can do to ensure that you have a long-lasting liquid applied membrane. Let's get into it. Now, for the record, we don't have a problem with fluid applied membranes in general. They can be fantastic and reliable systems. However, as with any other roofing system, they require attention to detail. What tends to happen, though, is that many roofers and do-it-yourselfers install this stuff directly on the roof deck or roof sheathing until the surface has been adequately covered at a suitable thickness and call it good. And that's exactly the problem. These liquid rubber membrane systems tend to be advertised or marketed as a silver bullet. We have the simple liquid applied coating that cures into a durable rubberized membrane that lasts forever and also happens to be cheap and the greatest thing since sliced bread. But the reality is that many liquid rubber products are simply just coatings and are not designed to be the primary roof membrane. That's why they're often specified to address leaks in existing roof membranes or to extend the service life of an existing membrane, but even then, they only work for a short period of time before they fail again. It's a band-aid. Permanent liquid rubber membranes and fluid applied systems in general require reinforcement, typically composed of a polyester fabric or fleece, to provide tensile strength to the membrane. This polyester fleece or fabric reinforcement keeps the membrane from cracking or tearing when exposed to the effects of thermal cycling, UV degradation, and other factors that can damage the roof membrane and provide some puncture resistance, which is a risk that needs to be considered when roof maintenance is being conducted. Without this reinforcement fabric, these liquid rubber membranes tend to wear off relatively quickly generally requiring a new liquid rubber coating to repair any damaged portions, and we end up with a messy buildup of cured liquid rubber over a period of a few years as we never address the initial problem. This is especially prevalent where there are roof transitions to parapet walls or other roof geometry, as these vertical transitions are often where we see failures in the roof membrane from the effects of expansion and contraction combined with heat and UV degradation. So how should a liquid rubber membrane be installed? First, the membrane needs to be installed on a compatible substrate. There are a handful of liquid rubber products on the market, each containing different chemicals and ingredients. It's important that the type of liquid rubber membrane specified is compatible with the substrate it's installed over. Otherwise, the membrane could cure without forming a proper bond, resulting in a waterproofing failure. A liquid primer is applied directly to the substrate to adhere the polyester reinforcing fabric to the surface. Typically, the primer is just the fluid applied or a liquid rubber compound, though some systems have a separate primer product that should be used. The sheets of polyester reinforcing fabric should be lapped and detailed as recommended by the manufacturer of the fluid applied system. If the manufacturer of the liquid rubber product only requires polyester reinforcement at the seams, it's best to choose a different system that requires reinforcement across the entire membrane or to install the polyester reinforcement across the entire roof assembly. The fabric must be set into the primer while it's wet. The fleece reinforcement also ensures that you're meeting the minimum application thickness required by the manufacturer. Oftentimes, if a fluid applied membrane fails, it's not covered by the warranty of the system if the membrane was not applied at the minimum recommended thickness. By installing the fluid applied liquid rubber coating on the reinforcing fleece, you're ensuring that the minimum thickness of the membrane is at least that of the polyester fabric. Then, the liquid rubber coating is uniformly applied to the surface of the polyester fleece with a roller. To ensure that the membrane is being applied at the manufacturer's recommended thickness, a mill gauge should be used to determine the thickness while it is wet. Occasionally, pinholes will form during the curing process of the liquid rubber coating, as trapped water will try to evaporate on a warm day. To avoid any waterproofing failures from the pinholes, the fluid applied membrane should be installed in multiple coats, as the secondary and tertiary coats will cover over the perforations formed by the pinholes. When we talk about liquid rubber membranes, we're generally referring to an entire category of fluid applied membranes that form a rubberized or rubber-like coating on the surface of the roof. Now, these can be composed of many different chemistries, such as polyurethanes, PMMA, and silicones. Liquid rubber is also the brand name for a popular fluid applied membrane system that has a range of products, but the term is also used colloquially to describe the liquid applied category, so this isn't a criticism of that company by any means, and in fact they make their own reinforcing fleece products. Understanding what type of system you're working with is crucial to the success and longevity of the roof assembly. The so-called best type of liquid applied roof membrane is less dependent on the product itself, but more on how it's installed, the type of exposure it will receive during its service life, the thickness of the application, and the climate conditions. 
As a general rule, reinforced polyurethane-based liquid membranes have a long track record of success in the building industry and have been used to waterproof a wide range of roofing systems, plaza decks, parking structures, and even in below-grade backfilled applications. However, all systems have their weaknesses, as fluid-applied polyurethane membranes should generally be avoided if the membrane is to be applied directly to a concrete roof deck due to the concerns of osmotic blistering. The wet cup vapor permeance of urethane membranes tends to be higher than their dry cup permeance. This means that when water is present above the membrane, it tends to diffuse inwards towards the concrete deck. As moisture diffuses into the concrete deck, it dissolves mineral salts contained within the concrete. This leads to an accumulation of water carrying dissolved salts beneath the membrane. The fresh water above the roof membrane attempts to dilute these salt concentrations to establish equilibrium, resulting in an osmotic reaction, and this osmotic pressure causes large blisters to form in the membrane. We'll put a link to that study in the description below. Reinforced liquid applied membranes can be highly effective at addressing leaks or damaged parts of an existing roof membrane, and can help to easily transition leaky unprotected parapets to the roof membrane without having to deal with extensive remodeling and repairs in many cases, granted that the liquid applied membrane is compatible with the membrane materials and adjacent substrates. While sheet membranes have a hard time adhering to irregular geometry and building materials, the benefit of liquid rubber membranes is that they can conform to nearly any surface and can effectively resist water entry for a long time when reinforced with polyester fleece fabric. Typically, the manufacturer will list a range of compatible substrates and incompatible substrates, but additional compatibility and adhesion tests are recommended. With that being said, another reason to choose a liquid applied system is that repairs on the membrane tend to be much easier, especially since the patchwork is integrated back into the membrane as a monolithic system. Now, liquid rubber or liquid applied membranes are not a substitute for standard best practice flashing installations, especially when the substrate that the membrane is terminated on is an exposed masonry or concrete substrate. For example, chimney penetrations, masonry parapets, or adjacent sidewalls need a metal counter flashing reglet that is cut into the masonry in order to shed water away from the membrane transition. This is one of the most common locations where we see failures in both liquid applied systems and sheet goods. Over time, heat and ultraviolet light can degrade the membrane and water can end up running behind it, resulting in blistering and leaks, not to mention that water absorbed by the masonry can bypass the membrane via capillarity. Application temperature is another big consideration when selecting a roof membrane. A lot of liquid applied products can't be installed during freezing conditions or even cold conditions. Usually 40 degrees Fahrenheit is the minimum application temperature for most liquid applied systems and if you're planning to install the membrane in a climate where you have warm daytime temperatures but low nighttime temperatures, that can be a problem as the membrane is curing. So that's something else to be aware of whether or not you're using a liquid applied system or even a single ply membrane product that uses adhesives. Guys, I hope this video was helpful. The biggest takeaway here is to make sure that you're providing that critical fleece reinforcement for your liquid rubber membrane. It doesn't matter if it's a small roof area, you need this to ensure that the membrane remains dimensionally stable and so that it can resist all of those damage functions that will deteriorate your roof. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more weekly building science videos and head over to our website at asiri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics. Links will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.